you with a couple of questions. Uh, one of them was regarding the import of contacts. And so um, just to cover that real quick, I actually did a webinar on importing recently, uh, or fairly recently. Um, let's see, which one is it? Importing. So this is a really good one to reference with regard to importing. Um, whether it's, you know, whether it's a skip trace list or not, if it, you know, any list of contacts that you might have, uh, if you want to import those with, with flags um, tied to those contacts, this would be the webinar to reference. And so if you just uh, do a search of import here in the training library and um, reference this video here, import skip trace list. And it's basically, you know, everything that you're going to want to do um, to, you know, to, import the the, uh, to import the list and um, basically it'll carry you through the categories and the, the headers of each field that you're going to import, uh, making sure your spreadsheet is clean. Um, then it'll carry you through, you know, which field you're, you're carrying that into. Basically, um, you'll select, you know, the uh, import with categories and flags. Um, then you'll be able to map each of those pieces from your data to the correct field and um, making sure, you know, if the, if it doesn't connect, you know, it'll give you the option to map it correctly there. Um, and so there's an example of, you know, where you can select the um, field that you're going to be mapping the data to. Um, in most cases, if the header is correct, then like back here, if you're working on your spreadsheet, if the header is correct, then and it matches exactly the um, name of the field in the system, then it'll marry it up really exactly. Um, and then otherwise, you'll be able to um, map those ones that if, if for whatever reason the header in the spreadsheet isn't exactly the same, you know, like it was missing a word or something, um, then you'll be able to map it right here. So, anyways, I would say come to this video and you'll be able, it'll just carry you through step by step and. And so the rather than redoing that again tonight, um, I would suggest, you know, doing that. And then um, tonight we'll get into a little bit more about how you can continue to organize your contacts with tags and categories and how you can create um, workflows that will assign those tags and then how you can, some of the things that you can do then once you've got those tags assigned. Um, so kind of going back to our dashboard, um, Again, when you're looking for that import video, just come to video replays and then just do a quick search for import. And it's going to be this one right here that's got the date on it. It's a, a recent webinar replay and it's, you know, it's about 13 minutes long. So it'll, it'll take you a couple minutes, but if you follow it step by step, it'll help you to get those contacts imported with tags. And, um, and then what we'll do now is uh, we'll go back to the dashboard and we're gonna, again, continue just kind of looking at ways that we can or organize our contacts and um, you know why you wanna organize your contacts around those tags and what some of the things you can do with those tagged groups. You know, in the workflows here, they're a lot like the action sets. If you were to add a, a new workflow, it has you know, your text replies and your ringless voicemails, your tasks, your notifications, your emails, all of that is under one umbrella now in, in the form of a workflow. Um, and over in our contacts, you'll see we've got, you know, they're organized by the, uh, by the tags. And so, for example, if you've got your no lead left behind group or, you know, your type of, you know, tag, your seller tags and your buyer tags and so on and so forth. Um, now, tags are going to be assigned in a couple of ways. Um, you know, one way is that, you know, when you've got a lead coming in and it's in the inbox here, you'll see there's a chance for you to return a call and you could assign a number to a contact. And so, for example, if we wanted to say seller uh, lead and we can, you know, enter an email address. Um, and you'll see there's an opportunity to add a tag right here as you're creating that contact. And so, you know, you might have an initial tag of, of a seller. Um, you might also want to tag it, maybe no lead left behind if you know that you're going to want to initiate some follow-up. Or maybe if it's the conversation is going well, you might initiate a hot prospect tag. Um, and so there's different things that you can do. Say, you know, um, right, let's see, maybe you can add a note, analyze. Um, 
property and write offer. You know, maybe you want to sit, make a quick note for yourself. Um, maybe you've identified the source in the course of your conversation. Um, maybe they saw, you know, bandit sign. So, anyways, you signed your contact, and we had a chance to, you know, create a tag there. Um, additionally, if, for example, we want to carry that lead forward a little bit, um, we can view that contact and we can add additional tags. So say maybe, we, um, you know, we trigger a workflow if that's appropriate. Um, maybe we want to, you know, have a no lead left behind workflow trigger and that might initiate a tag. But otherwise, we can actually go to that contact and you can see there's additional opportunity to add tags here. And so, you know, if, if something changed in the course of this, the process with this lead, we could add a tag right here on, on the contact record. Um, so we can, you know, add, you know, whatever. Um, let's see, no lead left behind is a good one. Or hot prospect, or you might develop, you know, maybe you gotta add a tags like, um, let's see, I'm gonna add a tag. We can go to our system settings and come to tags. Say so maybe we want to add one called offer submitted and we want to make it green because those are the ones that we want to identify as, you know, money making opportunities. And so offer has been submitted. We want to be able to tag those contacts. Now let's go back to our contacts here and we say seller lead X. Say so maybe that's one that's an offer has been submitted, right? And you just want to come in here and add that tag. So now we can see the five tags that have been added and we've got one of them hot prospect offer submitted and those are green. So um, again, that's a way to organize, start using your tags to organize your leads. So if this seller lead is, you know, one that's got an offer uh, submitted, you can always sort those. And right? if you come back here, you can always sort out through your contacts. Um, Like for example, if you want to sort out all of your leads that have an offer out there, you can apply that and it's going to sort through all of your contacts here in the database to all of those that have the, um, the offer submitted tag, right? And you can decide which tags you want, you want uh, to show and display here in the contacts database. And um, maybe you just want to have the offer submitted tags and maybe like driving for dollar lead, you may not need your source tag sources visible, um, but you can decide which ones you want visible or maybe you want them all visible and you can just use the drop down here to actually see them all. But, um, but again, you can sort through your database using your tags um, and you can even use multiple tags. So for example, if you want just the ones that are driving for dollar leads and have an offer out there, you know, you can sort those out like that. Um, so tags are gonna be really important in that way. And then you can, now you, that you've sorted out your tagged group, um, you can select all or, you know, one or, or all of them and initiate an action of maybe a, a text blast. Like, hey, um, just following up on that offer, um, wanted to see if you had a, uh, made decisions about that. Give me a call back today. Uh, I was wondering which, you know, option was closest you know, whatever your follow-up strategy is. And again, maybe it's a text blast or a wingless voicemail blast. And if you, you know, present the text in the right way with the right copy and the right, you know, call to action, you can actually send it to multiple people and it'll still be very personal and it'll still be consistent with whatever step it is they are at in the process, you know? And so if they're at, you know, that first follow-up process, you know, you can just say, hey, you know, looking to get you an offer. Um, but maybe they are in this group where they've, the offer has been submitted, you've isolated this group in your database, and now you want to send them a, a different, more specific text blast or a different ringless voicemail that's a little bit more pointed in, in the sense that you're following up on the offer that's been submitted, right? And so, um, you know, that, that is definitely ways that you're going to want to use your tags to organize your leads. Um, if you've imported a big batch of contacts, like in that video that I, I referenced at the top of the webinar, um, like that was 
you know, in that replay, we actually were importing skip trace lists. And so you'd actually want to tag your seller groups in batches that you can manage. So, you know, batches of one or 200, because if you blast a thousand or more at, at a single time, um, you'll probably generate more response than you can handle. You know, if you get 50 callbacks at once, of sellers that are want to all talk to you all at once, that's going to leave a lot of people, you know, hanging. And um, so you can strategize that by tagging your groups, you know, skip, skip trace group one, skip trace group two, and, and you'll have those tags available to grab and blast. Now, you know, you can, you can even come straight here and say you at the top of the day, you're like, all right, well, I want to tag or I want to blast a group. Um, you can come right here to text blast, initiate a, a text blast and um, select a group. You know, and so it's the same tags, same principles. Um, you just select the group that you want to follow up with. Maybe you're following up with your, you know, hot prospects and saying, hey, you know, I'm looking forward to the appointment this week. Um, you know, please let me know if anything changes, you know, whatever it else. And so you may have different follow-ups in different groups and, um, but it's essentially the same thing. You'll be able to grab those tagged groups right here um, and then create your message. Um, so yeah, using your tags is going to be really important. Um, some of the, some really important tags to use. Um, let's come in here to our tags in our system settings. You know, we've got a bunch of tags available out of the gate. So there's, you know, the system will allow a bunch of tags uh, or create a bunch of tags for you. Um, so as soon as you generate your initial website um, and publish that, it creates, you know, the action sets and tags and different autoresponders in the system. And, and a bunch of those, absentee owner, you know, website lead, buyer prospect, cash offer inquiry, those are tied to different web forms in the system. And so you know, when somebody comes in on your website, there's a tag of distressed seller or cash offer inquiry that is assigned to that contact. And then a few others here that you'll create, you know, investor maybe or, or um, driving for dollar lead. You might have different, um, you know, repeat caller, um, different things like that that might identify, you know, different types of leads in your system. Um, one that I always circle back to is the no lead left behind lead. So use this as a, um, just a umbrella sort of bucket, um, whatever for sellers that are suspect or just curious or maybe whatever reason aren't motivated or, or totally with it. But anybody that's not needing to sell, you know, you can put them right in this bucket and then follow up with them over the long term. And over the long term, things can change and there may be their motivation or their urgency changes, right? Or their situation changes and, you know, and they, you know, you can always follow up with them and, and actually use the, uh, like a three option LOI as a follow up tool. So you send them one of those and then you throw them in the no lead left behind bucket and then they get a text every other week, you know, so maybe the first of the month and the 15th of the month, they get a, a text blast and you just grab that tagged group and you're able to send them um, a, a ringless voicemail. You know, you upload the recording and then you can send the blast. Um, and um, so, you know, you got your tag group, you got your sources, um, you can add your sources and, and you know, here's a bunch of different types of sources. And again, these are all the different lead generation strategies that you can put into play. And, um, you know, you can then create your call flows and your workflows that are gonna allow you to resolve different types of leads, okay? And so going back to um, the types of workflows that you might be using, you know, of course, call flows are gonna be initiated when somebody rings a number, right? You got your numbers, and if somebody calls the driving for dollars line, you can have a call flow that is triggered. But workflows are available to be triggered at any time. These are like little groups of actions, right, that can be, triggered at any time, um, they can be part of, um, you know, your response when you were talking to sellers and maybe you want to carry out a certain series of actions on the suspects and you want to carry out a different series of actions on the prospects. And so you can have a different workflow available for each, right? And so on the no lead left behind one, we'll just take a quick look. You know, this would be apply a tag, 
Um, it might have a delay of two days and then a text reply, right? And it might have a delay of three days and then a, a ringless voicemail, a delay of a day and then another email, right? A delay of a day or a delay of uh, seven days and then the next email, right? So you can carry on the distress seller sequence if that's what it's going to be. Distress seller one, delay, distress seller two. And so that would be a start to the no lead left behind um, seller lead. You know, so this might be called seller lead, no lead left behind, um, long term. And so that would be like a long term uh, follow up sequence for your sellers. Now you might have one that is called seller prospect offer submission, All right? We'll save that. And now we're gonna use um, a couple tags here. We wanna tag it as a hot prospect. We wanna tag it as offer submitted, All right? That new tag that we created is now available and part of our workflow. And so uh, we'll come in here and we'll say, all right, well, we wanna have um, an immediate task um, of follow-up call on offer, right? And you can describe the task and you can even have a merge field with um, the contact's name and the contact's phone number. I even have an email in here just in case. So you get all the contact information in there as the details as part of the task, you know, and this will turn up on the global task list and you can even choose which person you're gonna have it assigned to on your team. Make sure uh, you identify the task type. It's a high priority because this is a follow-up on a, a call uh, or an offer. So this is a really important task. It's the most important type of task. Um, it's due immediately and it is a high priority. And then you might even have a delay of a day and you know, um, follow up call on offer number two. You know, and this kid, this task can be either you know reassigned or, or maybe um, deleted if this one is successful. You know, if you end up getting this contract signed, then this this could be deleted off the task board. But it might be a great to have a second follow up. Um, you might have a delay. Um, Let's see, you know, prepare marketing or whatever it is, um, or review. Um, let's see, follow up calls. This is just offer submitted. So, you know, seller prospect offer submitted. It might be simple just with the task and then um, the tag. So we can save and close that. Uh, what other ones? We might have one that is related to seller appointment. So we can have seller lead. I should call it so prospect um, appointment plan. So prospect appointment plan. Um, so this might be you know, a hot prospect, and you might even have a, a fresh tag called you know appointment pending or something like that. Um, and then you can have um, task of uh, Analyze property for appointment, right? And then you know, you know prepare rough offer for appointment, and you might have somebody that you assign that to, and it might include a letter template or something else that you prepare, um, you know, and, and you bring to the appointment. It might include uh, priority make it a high priority. Um, you know, you might have a couple of other tasks there. You might have a notification to a sales associate um, that the appointment's been made. That's a really good one. You know, so uh, uh, let's see. Appointment has been set. Um, check in box for prep sheets. You know, so you might have some sent and prepared and this might be a text notification to your sales associate. Um, you might have a delay then and, you know, delay of one day. And the task could be, 
you know, to run an appointment. And you might include the contact information for the, the seller, you know, full name, contact info for the seller. You can choose who that's assigned to. You may not have a task type, but it's a high priority. Um, might have a delay of a day. And, you know, another task would be then follow up call on offer. You know, because if, if they had the appointment, then they'd most likely, you know, left an offer on appointment and leave offer or And then if they've done that, there's a, a you know, follow-up call, you know, send and you know, and let's say to initial. And then again, you can add the merge field, you can add the, you know, the assignment there. So again, this would be a, a great little workflow that includes all the tasks and the tags. Um, you know, wait, delay one day, you can say run appointment. Okay, we insert the tag of offer submitted down here at this stage of the flow, right? And so the different tags would come in at the, the right time after the right delays. So after that task, you know, the offer will be submitted and there's a delay of a day, a task. But you might have initial um, or second tag set up here based upon, you know, what the status is of this call. Um, or, you know, or you leave it up to the responder there to jump in and tag that contact after they've had another follow-up call and actually talk to the person, you know, or they trigger the next workflow, you know. Um, but what you do is you create, you can just go through your process and you create the six or eight different workflows you need to resolve your leads as they come through. You might have, you know, four or five right at the head of the process so that you know, when you're in your inbox, you can trigger a workflow from right here. You can say, okay, I'm going to trigger the property sold workflow because they told me their property was sold and I'll have, it'll tag the contact with that or it'll, you know, update the record and it'll, it'll send them an automated text reply that says, Hey, we saw your property was sold, but you have any more for sale. Or maybe you have an angry caller workflow or an opt out flow. You trigger that if that's appropriate. Or, like I said, if it's a, a setting up an appointment or it's a hot lead, you have that workflow for that. Um, and then additionally, as you're carrying those leads through the system and you're dealing with those sellers and you're, you're carrying through um, different activities, like if you're, you know, you've added the property here and you've updated tags and now you've got an accepted offer, well, maybe you're going to say you're going to trigger an offer accepted flow. And that gets the marketing started, you know, and, and there's a series of actions there, um, you know, and so you'd be able to just, you know, jump right over to the property in the pipeline and boom, start hammering out those tasks. And so you may have a, a series of workflows that you trigger from here. Um, they carry the leads through at different points and, um, you know, they can start out really simple and you, they can be evolved, you know, because you can always come right up into your system settings and you can just go to your workflows. Um, and you can create those right there. It's just add new workflow and you say, okay, what's the, what step is it? And what, you know, what are the three processes or whatever that I want to execute to make this happen? Um, so I hope that helps.